Thank you, too, for being consultants. I will tell you when we're done what we told the rest of the group, okay? And him as well. Harley, I'm going to walk in and start. Are you ready? I'm ready. Harley, Paul Reagan, you remember me? How you do, Paul? Very good. Pleased to meet you. Thank you for coming back. Oh, yeah. You remember the other day uh, I said uh, I was not ready to buy a car? Yes. Tonight I'm ready to buy a car. Wonderful. In fact, I'm leaving on vacation to Jamaica in a few days, and it'd be nice to get the car ordered and get it coming in from uh, wherever you buy them. I think from I Detroit. probably got that model on the lot. Would you uh, like me to write it up? Uh, well, yes, if you got it, but I don't think you have, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, sit down, I'm, sit down, Paul. Yes, thank the you. Um, uh, quote you gave me for $4,400, you said, was good for. 30 days. 30 days. And we're, we're two weeks here. So we're in good shape on that quote, right? Um, it depends on what changes you've made to that specification, how special the car is. Well, it is a special it, car, but it was part of the quote. You remember I asked you to include the trailer towing package, which is the heavy duty transmission? You said that would be a special order car five weeks. Uh -huh. So, and that's no problem because I'll be gone for three weeks anyway. I don't need it before then. Yeah. Okay, so. Depending on what we get on the, how we define the car exactly and if there's any changes I'll have to, I may have to check with I want the car to exactly the way you quoted it okay and I don't want it before the five weeks if uh, we can do it in five weeks in that case yeah okay now <clears throat> you did ask me to come back before I uh, bought a car and you know who Roselle Ford is yes. um, okay well they gave me a quote for 4325 which is just $75 difference. Mm -hmm. And I've got the check made out. The only thing I don't have is pay two in there. I've got $43.25. Do you have a stamp, or do you want to write it in, or how do you want to do that? You're prepared to order this car and, and pay me $4,325. Sure, it. that's a quote I got from Roselle. The benefits, as I told you the other day, of dealing with our distributorship are the long-term service after the sale and the advantages that that gives to you as a customer in terms of security and always well, being there I, when you're I don't have a up. problem with it. That's why I'm back here trying to buy the car from you. Are you sold? Good. Good. The only, the only thing I need to know is do you have a stamp or do you want to write this, your name well, in there? One of, the, one of the reasons I'm telling you that is because of all those things that we do for our customers, we really have to get $4,400 for that car. Mm. Our service and our uh, the care with which, you know, the fact that we pick you up, we get more our cars if there's ever any service while your car is being taken care of. We will. You have a pickup and drop off yeah, service? Absolutely. And you have loaners? Yes, absolutely. How long do you uh, give loaners? Uh, if we're doing a tune up, uh, normally that'll take a day or so when the car's in for warranty service. If it's just a matter of a few hours, we'll do pickup and delivery. If it's overnight, uh, but I mean, the loaner, the loaner program car. is in place for the duration of the time somebody uh, uses your service? Yes. Hmm. Well, Harley, that's very interesting, but let me let me give you a problem. Thursday night, I'm leaving for Jamaica Saturday morning. I'll be gone for three weeks. What you're going to do, or whoever does it, you or Roselle, on, I mean, it checks already signed. All I need to do is put the answer to pay two on here. What you're going to do is either telex or phone Detroit tomorrow and ask them to make this weird car with the larger transmission, the air conditioning probe, and the heavy duty shock, and all the rest of it. That's and 300 people are going to work on this car, and a car transport is going to drop this car off three weeks from now, either here or at Roselle. So a Ford is a Ford is a Ford, and I'm not going to pay more for it, of, you know, here versus there. And you shouldn't, but you're actually 
not paying me more by by buying this car for the price that I told you it would cost, which is $4,400, you're actually getting a better deal buying that car from me at $4,400 than you are from Roselle at $4,375, $4,325. I know there's a new math, but I I didn't get that one. I mean, $4,325 is less than $4,400, uh, even if you go to Catholic Grammar School. Come on. Let's take a walk out to the service department, and I'll introduce you to our chief mechanic who came over from Germany right after the war. This guy does a fantastic job. He's an engineer. He does. He supervises our staff of 73 qualified mechanics. He, w you need to meet him, and this is the person that's going to be taking care of this car. And if you come into our dealership by making this purchase, every other car you own will be serviced here. Your family will, everybody in your family will over the next three or four years end up buying cars from me because that's the way we work. We don't lose customers here. We have that kind of relationship with our people. We are the ones that will call you when the car needs service. Because in this is Ford meeting. making a lemon this year? Should I be looking at Chevy's? Chevy <laughs> makes a good car, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I think if you had to choose between the big three, Ford and Chevy would be superior to Chrysler. But uh, Chevrolet does make a good product. We think ours is superior in several different areas. The so you, you don't know anything trailer. I don't know about the Ford having a bad year Not service wise? Uh, the transmission and trailer towing package, this car equipped with those is probably superior to an equal size ship. Okay, well, let, me, let me translate what I hear you say. You say, get your ass out of here and go buy that car from Roselle if you have to buy it for forty three twenty five. I think you would be making a mistake doing that, but if that's your decision. No, no, it's not my decision. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to check to see if that's what you're saying to me. We are saying that buy this car from us at $4,400. It'll save you money over the long haul. You'll be better off the day you buy it, six months from now, a year from now. Okay, so you're trying to make an argument that the price is not the real issue. It's an issue, but it's not the most important thing. Let's check that out for a minute. Let me, let me check that out for a minute with you. I'm not trading this car in. This car's going to my son who's at the University of Illinois in Champaign. It's a good car. I've had it for two years. It's a Ford. And, but it has an easy lift 9,000 trailer hitch on it. So when I buy this car from you or Roselle, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to have to go someplace to have that old hitch cut off. Okay. You're enough of a mechanic, I know, that you know to take... 60 cents worth of acetylene gas to cut it off, a couple welding rods and a few wire nuts to install it on a new car. Would you consider as part of the package? Absolutely. Take it off and put it on a new car? Absolutely. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, thing to consider. So remove your existing trailer hitch from your hitch existing car and reinstall. Harley, uh, old man Roselle tried to convince me of something. Uh, incidentally, he, he paid you a hell of a compliment. Do you normally get compliments from your competitors? I think so. Uh, he said that if you wind up buying a car from Harley, you will not make a mistake. Apparently, you've been in business for 17 years. He said you're one of, he belongs to some, I don't know, chamber of commerce with you. And Roselle stuff. used to work for us. Is he that was, right? He was one, of our, one of our best sales. <laughs> uh, 88 years old. No, I'm teasing. No. He, he did say a lot of good things about you. Anyway. One of the things he tried to talk me uh, into is to have the car um, z barred You know what that means? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, I said to him, well, I'm only going to keep the car for two years. It's not going to rust out. And he made an interesting argument. He said, Mr. Reed, you're buying a Ford. He said, it's a good car. He said, but it's not a Mercedes. He said, so think about when you slam the door and it sounds like a tin bathtub. He says, when you... Z barred these things, the sound attenuation goes up dramatically, especially road noise and whatever. And I wear hearing aids. Road noise drives me nuts. So I gave it some thought until it came up with the price $350 to Z barred the car. And as a last closing argument before I walked out, because I told him I had a quote from you and you'd said to stop by and see you, 
He said, you know, Mr. Regan, my cost on that is $200. He said, I wouldn't want to lose any money putting it on. He said, but if you'll buy a car from me, he said, I'll throw the Z-Bart in for $200 extra dollars, which would take that, of course, to 40 cents. Would you do that if I decided to buy the car from you? Actually, Z-Barting is a registered and patented process. Right. And in order to get for us or for Mr. Rozelle to get a car Z-Barted, we have to send that car to z -Bart. Right. We do that as an option, but we also put on our own process in our own garage, and we only charge $200 to do that. What's the cost of that option to you? Well, I don't know exactly, but we make a profit on everything we sell, probably an a fair profit. It could be $125. Okay. Let's talk ballpark. About if I decided to go hour, with your... If I decided to go with your process, would you throw in any cost, 125 or 40 or whatever it's going to be? Um, no, I think that we wouldn't do that. We'd, we'd ask you to pay for that. All right, then let's That's... go back to Z-Bart. If I decided to ask you to send it out to Z-Bart, will you uh, do it for me for cost? Because I can't get the cost. Yes, you I can. will do it for you. Okay, for so you do Z-Bart I do want cost. to assure you that both processes are equivalent. Though. We do the same, we give the same care effect. My, our mechanic tells us that we do a better job because he's seen the kind of work that they do. Mm. We know Ford much better than Z-Bar does. Z-Bar does all cars. We do Ford. And I think our process, which I just told you will cost you $125, will be superior to the to us sending it out to Z-Bar and pass along the cost of $200. But that's my choice. I can either of go course. with you or, or you'll pass that Z-Bar at cost. I'll pass it. Hmm. Well, there's one other thought I had, and I'd be, um, I think we're getting closer. You know what sport mirrors are. Yes. I do not have sport mirrors in that uh, quote. That's a $75 option. Per mirror? No, on both, both, on both sides. This is a trailer towing. Yeah. A big trailer towing mirror. How do you feel about them? Think they're a good idea? If you're planning to pull a big trailer, they're a must. Um, you could also buy the kind that you could remove and add on when you're actually pulling the trailer because they are fairly large. So you mm. may not want to drive around with them. No, they kind of look ugly. Harley, let's go back to a problem. Uh, I, see, I see a lot of value here, but I have an emotional problem. I walked out of the house tonight, and my wife said, you're going to buy a car. I said, yes, I can buy it at 43.25. And I think Harley wants to talk to him because he said, make sure you check with him before he buys. Now I walk in and I say, um, I paid $4,600 for a car because I got talked into Z-Bart at 200 bucks, paid him 44. Uh, I'm going to look like a turkey. So one thing I need to do is, is in my own head, just for psychological reason is give you that $200 in a separate check. That's no problem, I'm sure. The other thing I need to do is not pay $4,400 for this car. Let's crack that price and we got a deal. With the mirrors or without? <laughs> well, I was thinking we were going to throw the mirrors that night. At the $4,400 price, uh, I'll absorb half of the mirror cost, which is $3,750. Um, which brings us down to... So you'll split the mirrors? Sure. 3750 And then w what does the price of the car come down to? Uh, 4400 less 3750 I see. So you really want to pay full price for the mirrors and knock off the 3750 and the price in my head. 43 whatever it is. 43 what, is that what I heard you say? 4,400 less. I'm not. Oh, let's just I'm not figure. I'm an instant mathematician. Uh, okay, it's, it's close. It's 40, 4,365. Tell you what. <clears throat> let's skip the mirrors, bring the price down to 4,365 with all those other things, and we got a deal. We have a deal. And give me a hand. Well done. Okay. 
I think you did. Okay. Good. You did. Very good. Sold the car. All right. We got a deal. We got a deal. Now, let me tell you and your two cohorts what I told them when you were out of the room. I told the rest of them. Two years earlier, I had bought a car from Roselle Ford. Just lots of problems with it. Not Roselle Ford. I was married with uh, four kids. My wife was staying home, running the house, four kids. And she gave me her car while she took the car in and out. Pain in the neck. Cab rides, bothering neighbors, waiting at the place one time. And they didn't want her back with the kids. And it's it, just a hassle. So it's two years later, we're going to buy a, another car. There is a, a Ford dealer two blocks up and three blocks over um, called Wooddale Ford. So she said to me, are you going to buy another Ford? And I said, yes. She said, will you buy it at Wooddale Ford, which we have renamed Harley Ford? I said, well, it's a $75 difference. She said, so will you buy it at Harley Ford and pay the $75 difference? So I came back having promised them and my wife that I would buy the car from you, and if I had to, pay the $4,400. Now, up here is a tough place, but one of the things I wrote on this check was, I live five blocks away. So I wouldn't have lied if he asked me it was on the check, but I didn't volunteer that information. I didn't read it. I didn't see it. I know. I said it there. Nobody no, read ever reads it. Down. <laughs> I used to read upside down. <laughs> okay. So, now what I asked the rest of the group to do is look at the negotiation techniques, technique by technique, buyer-seller. First thing I want to mention is I've done this negotiation, and the car example is one we use regularly. Too many times to want to tell you. This is your first time. Secondly, unless you fooled me, you don't sell cars for a living. I used to sell motorcycles. Okay, well then you had a, you had a leg up to most people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, but my real point is, this isn't real. All this was was a device for us to learn some technique. What you saw go on in this, this thing will never happen in front of a, a real car dealer. Some of it will work, but uh, most of them will run out of the room screaming long before we get to what happened here. Because some things went on here uh, that were technique. Now, I drove most of those techniques, and what I want you to do is discover them. Psychologically, when we examine benefits, you all know what benefits are from your basic training. Remember the definition of a benefit is the possibility of making a gain or the avoidance of a loss? Well, psychologically, we now know that it's more powerful an incentive to fear a loss than to anticipate a gain. For example, Nancy, go way, way back maybe when you were working in high school or working your way through school or something. Remember you had a job? Okay. I'm teasing, but if an, an hourly, an hourly rate, okay, you know, like an hourly rate kind of thing or something. Where now, if someone would have come along and said, "I'll give you 50 cents more an hour if you do X," that would have been one level of motivation. But remember back, I, I, my first job was a dollar 47 and a half cents an hour. If someone had come back, come by and said, "If you're not on time for work every day for the next two years," you're going to have a retroactive 10 cents an hour cut, I probably would have died from that fear, you know. So the, the potential of loss is a greater motivator than the potential for gain. What did the check on the table represent to the, to the seller in this case? A bird in hand. Pardon? A bird in hand. bird in hand. All he could do is screw it up, right? And all it lacked was his name on it. That was a strong motivator. If any of you ever work with purchase orders, do you get signed contracts or purchase orders? Okay. I do too. I always have. I've had guys lay a contract in front of me and say, here's the contract made out the way I want to buy it. All you need to do is put your name on it. I've looked at some of those contracts and started to drool, but I knew I couldn't <laughs> take them, you know? <laughs> so creating pressure sometimes to a time frame. And the oldest one in the world is uh, someone else is coming back, and if you don't buy it, it won't be here. And I'm not talking about that, but there is a time frame uh, so pressure. Many, if not most, are all negotiations start off on economic issues in business, and most of them wind up in psychological issues.